Hello, I bring you greetings from the Archdiocese of Winnipeg. I'm Archbishop Richard Gagnon. Thank you for listening in today. I want to share with you a little bit about the good news regarding the Share Lent campaign for development of peace in the Archdiocese of Winnipeg. And I have a special person next to me that many of you will recognize. And uh, Jason Segal is the animator for development of peace in Manitoba and Thunder Bay. So. I've got a couple of questions I'll ask Jason today and he'll share with you the good news about the Share Lent campaign. So welcome Jason, it's great to be with you today. We've had many conversations and uh, you're going to speak to us about the Share Lent campaign, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a question here I want to ask you first of all, just a general question like tell us something about the campaign. Like, what, what is the theme? What is the focus? What's it all about for this year 2022? For sure. So this Lent in general is such a beautiful season. Um, it's a beautiful liturgical season where we become closer to God, uh, but also closer to one another uh, in different ways, whether that be through prayer, whether that be through almsgiving, um, whether that be through fasting. It's a, it's a time of self-reflection. Um, and this year's Share Lent campaign is, is quite unique uh, because for many of you who are very familiar with development and peace, in the past it used to be uh, a different name than the Fall Action Campaign. Mm -hmm. However, this year we will be using the same name and continuing the amazing work that the partners are doing in the Global South um, that we first started off with in the fall. So I have the beautiful poster here for the Share Lent campaign. Okay, hold it up nice and high so people mm. can see it. So this is the, the, the Share Lent campaign will be People and Planet First. And for the Share Lent campaign, we'll be focusing a lot on the importance of an ecological conversion. Mm -hmm. and the importance of the resilience of the partners in the Global South amidst the adversity that climate change brings to these communities. So in particular, we'll be continuing to support uh, the work of Caritas Chaluteca and Sepradec uh, in the Honduras, which is working with local grassroots organizations to be able to provide legislation and land titles for many indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, within those communities, we find a lot of businesses uh, organizations that are exploiting the land for enroachment, um, for mining, deforestation, etc., mm -hmm. which very much negates the existence of uh, many indigenous communities, um, negating their, their human dignity, um, but as well as um, causing a lot of negative effects on, uh, on the planet, uh, on the community itself which is very important for, for these communities. And some of, those ca some of those companies are Canadian too, I understand. Exactly. So it's a time for us to also be aware as to what our impact as Canadians have on those in the Global South. Um, so we'll continue to support the wonderful work that Caritas Chaluteca and Sepradec are doing in the Honduras. Mm -hmm. um, we'll also continue supporting the work of DPA, Development and Partnership in Action, in Cambodia. And uh, in particular, DPA will be working with many local grassroots organizations uh, and providing formation for the community, but as well as resources for them um, to continue supporting um, commun communal fisheries. Um, so the community will be able to um, have this resource for them. Um, fishing um, is a very important aspect of uh, Cambodian culture mm -hmm. um, and, and a way of life for them as well. Um, unfortunately, we find a lot of um, negative impacts of climate, uh, climate change taking place. Uh, but these formations, these community um, fisheries are very much helping the communities um, for the Cambodian community um, and by the Ca Cambodian community. Uh, this year, we'll be adding another partner that we will be highlighting, and it is with the CDA. Uh, so it's with the Conseil de Développement d'Ado Hatapaneka in Madagascar. Okay. And Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world and also a country that faces a lot of uh, climate change, resulting in a lot of poverty as well. However, regardless of the obstacles that they, that they are facing, um, they continue to demonstrate such resilience and an, a true ecological conversion. Um, so CDA is working very closely with grassroots organizations, um, community, the, with the Madagascan community to be able to put in place 51 micro projects, one of which is a community garden. 
And from this community garden, it is created by the Madagascan community for the Madagascan community, and also highlighting the principle of Catholic social teaching of community participation. Mm -hmm. So men, women, students are all involved in this community garden. Um, so again, th these examples of what the partners are doing is a true example of ecological conversion and something for us as Canadians we can definitely learn from. And you know, development and peace, uh, a lot of people don't understand this, but uh, it's, it's not a matter of supplying funds and resources directly to the Global South. It's the engagement, as you said, of partners, right? Local partnership, the local people are involved in these developments, and that's one of the beautiful and powerful things about development peace. And I think uh, in Southeast Asia, Cambodia, and those countries, uh, the uh, development peace has been involved for quite a long time, as well as the Philippines and other countries around that part of the world, for sure. So that's very interesting. Well, you mentioned about the poster here, the, uh, the, folk, the theme is people and planet first. So that's what you're talking about. You're talking about development of peoples and looking after the environment and working those two things together. So kind of fascinating, very rich uh, themes there that you're talking about. Uh, another question I have really is about our own local people here. And uh, how can, uh, for example, Jason, how can our local parishioners get involved in this work? Uh, Catholics have always been known for their charitable work around the world, use the word charity in a sense of love, helping one's neighbor around the world. And for this year, 2022, some of our people listening to this video may not be too much aware of how they can become involved. And in addition to that, how does their involvement impact directly, you know, the people that are receiving this good work being done by Canadians? It's a great question. Um, development and Peace has three main pillars of, of action. Mm -hmm. The first is education, the second is advocacy, and the third is fundraising. So there are many ways that Catholics for this uh, Lenten season can become involved with Development and Peace. Um, so I'll first start uh, with education. Um, so Development and Peace has amazing resources uh, that are made available online uh, and also within your parish. Here I have um, the wonderful uh, mini magazine for development and peace. So we'll talk about um, for each Sunday uh, the importance of what the work of the partners are doing. So if you want to learn more about what the partners are doing, um, you can definitely grab a copy in your parish soon. Um, they will be made available throughout the Lenten season or mm -hmm. to also check out the development and peace very, website. Very helpful that. Mm -hmm. Um, furthermore, there are also a lot of wonderful theological resources available uh, online. Mm -hmm. um, so many prayers that you can also insert within the liturgy, um, prayers of the faithful, um, prayers that you can even select for yourself for this time um, of, of Lent. There will also be the Stations of the Cross inspired by the work of the partners uh, for development and peace and really bring that together with the suffering of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, but as well as the victory um, that Christ has brought to each and every single one of us that we will be celebrating soon in the Easter season. So many resources that are available for parishes and for each Catholic individually as well. For the second aspect, uh, we have the advocacy. So as I mentioned, um, there are many mining companies, Canadian mi mining companies mm -hmm. operating in many countries in the global south. Right. And um, what we're really working hard to put forward is the due diligence law in which we are asking Canadians to sign the due diligence law, to sign the petition so that it would be presented to a member of parliament and hopefully pass as legislation, which will hold enterprises and organizations um, liable to their actions and ensuring that human rights and environmental rights are respected throughout all chains of their production. It's an interesting point before you go on, Jason, because the, the various laws we have in Canada as they apply to mining companies and other kinds of, uh, of natural resource uh, industries, the guidelines and laws in this country don't apply in those third world countries in, in, in the global south. So uh, really, uh, this is a part of the problem, is that these kinds of guidelines, these kinds of due diligence on the part of companies needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in Canada, we behave ourselves, but when it comes to the developing world, it's kind of different. That's correct. So this, this law, we've, we, we need more signatures, so yeah. each and every single signature counts. You can have the paper version um, that we will then present to a member of parliament, or you can also sign them online. So very, very I encourage good. each and every single one of you to consider that. 
Um, the last uh, action that we have is in terms of fundraising. Um, so um, for Development and Peace, we strongly encourage you to make a donation. And uh, these donations have a very strong impact on the work of the partners. Um, notably with Victor Vasquez, who was actually put in prison. He's Honduran. Mm -hmm. um, and he was put into prison um, for simply defending his land from enroachment. Uh, but thanks to the work of Caritas Chalutec and Sepredec, they, they were able to, to have the resources such as lawyers, um, also the legislation that they needed to um, take, take uh, the ownership of their land. And he was recently just released from jail. Um, so the work that Development and Peace does has a huge impact. Um, we also have uh, this opportunity to encourage parishioners to become share year round donors. So any um, monthly donations that are made starting on Ash Wednesday, so March the 2nd until Pentecost, June mm -hmm. the 5th, will then be doubled dollar by do dollar for dollar um, from, from various organizations, including many religious organizations. Um, so your donation during this Share Lent campaign mm -hmm. and considering to become a monthly donor will have an even greater impact on those in the Global South. So a double impact for your donations. That's correct. And uh, do you take donations, uh, all one-time donations or monthly? Mm -hmm. uh, does Development and Peace take pledges also? I'll pledge so much money over a period of time. Is that possible for people as well? That's correct. There's many ways to give. Mm -hmm. If uh, a one-time donation is, is, is what you can give right now, that is very much uh, welcomed. You can become a monthly donor and you can also pledge as well. Um, so there's many ways to be able to give. Excellent, excellent. Well, Jason, thank you very much for sharing that bit of good news with us. It's always helpful to put a name to a face, and it's also helpful for people to actually see some of the visual related to the uh, Shareland campaign. You know, I couldn't help but reflect that the Catholic Church for over a, well over 100 years now in the area of social justice has, uh, has put forth all kinds of important teachings with regards to social justice. Mm -hmm. And um, Development and Peace, the Canadian Organization for Development and Peace, is also part of Caritas Internationalis, right? An international Catholic charities for sure. And, and one of the things when I saw your when I saw your theme there, people and planet first, I couldn't help but think of the founding document uh, from which Development and Peace gained its inspiration and its founding, Populorum Progressio, in 1967. There. St. Paul VI, Pope Paul VI, both spoke about integral human development. Mm -hmm. And the new name for, de for peace, he said, is development. And by integral human development, he means that human flourishing, fullness of human living, depends on the physical needs of people, the psychological means of living, freedom in terms of your lifestyle and expression, as well as the spiritual component of the human being. And with people first, people and planet first, they, these are the kinds of projects that are being done that are connected with integral human development that Pope St. Paul VI spoke about. So it's great to hear this news and I encourage all of you that are listening to this video to consider making a donation, also to be an advocate for the cause of social justice in the Global South. Thank you, Jason. Thank Great you, to Marcus. see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome.